It's said that Mexico was built on legends, tall tales that help us make sense of things too great or too terrifying to believe. This, however, is the legend of Don Alejo Garza Tarmez. There's an old saying that goes, it's better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. On November 14th, 2010, 77-year-old Don Alejo single-handedly fought for his ranch against the Los Cetas cartel. One of the most terrifying cartels in all of Mexico, known for their ruthless and violent ways, but Alejo didn't care. So he did what no other farmer had ever done. He refused to surrender his ranch to the cartel and he took a stand fighting to his last breath. The thing about legends is, sometimes they're true. Hi, my name is Jeff Truman and I make true crime and business conspiracy videos once a week. So consider subscribing and welcome to the Jeff Truman Show. Don Alejo took his first breath in 1933 in the small town of Allende, located in the state of Nuevo Leon, Mexico. His father owned a sawmill where he taught Alejo how to chop down wood and prepare it for sale. When he got old enough, his father entrusted him to reach out to customers and consumers from neighboring towns and transporting the wood. Eventually, after some time, the family business was booming and they were able to open multiple stores within the city. Alejo, on the other hand, was slowly but surely making a name for himself in the community as a family man, a hard worker, and a reliable friend. Many of his friends and family would go as far as to say that a promise from Alejo was as good as a contract. Alejo never wanted to see his community suffer, so he helped orange farmers turn their land into chicken farms due to the fact that the methods of manufacturing and storing ice cream became more efficient at the time. So a lot of fruit farmers lost their jobs and fell on hard times. Ever since he was a boy, he enjoyed to go fishing and hunting with his brother. It became such a great passion for him growing up that he established Allende's first hunting, fishing, and shooting club with his friends. In a nation that had tight gun laws, Don Alejo managed to secure permits from the Secretary of National Defense to own an impressive collection of hunting rifles and later hundreds of hunting trophies in his lifetime. After earning enough money from his family business, Don Alejo and his brother purchased a massive plot of land near a lake which was located near Victoria City. Alejo and his brother would split the land between themselves where Alejo would generate revenue from the ranch through fishing, agriculture and livestock and contribute to the local economy by hiring people to help him maintain the ranch. Don Alejo based himself and his business in Allende, but his life revolved around his ranch during the weekends where he would relax with his family and make memories with his wife and two children. They say real heroes don't wear capes, so in the case of Don Alejo, this would be true. A decent human being that minds his community and friends by putting others before him and being a present father to his children. I think if we could be half the man Alejo was, we would definitely leave this world a better place. But just like any other fairy type story, the hero is befallen by evil and his life changes forever. November 13th, 2010. Some members of the infamous Los Cetas cartel came calling. They approached the now 77 year old Don Alejo because they had an eye for his ranch. They wanted to use it as an outpost for their drug running operation in the area. So after approaching Don Alejo, they tried to convince and intimidate him to make a generous donation of his ranch to the Los Cetas. The ranch that he worked so hard for and brought him close to his family. As most people would cower and accept this offer, Don Alejo looked them dead in the eye and he told them, If you want it, come get it be waiting. The Losetas left the ranch, not before making it clear they would be back the next morning to collect on their deal. This is who Don Alejo was dealing with. The Losetas cartel, formed in 1997 by the former Mexican Special Forces who were trained by the United States Special Forces. Their unit had one goal, to fight against Mexican cartels. 
They, however, decided to defect that purpose and form their own cartel, naming themselves the Losetas Cartel. They're known for kidnapping innocent civilians, journalists, and political rivals. After a hostage has served his or her purpose, they would later take them to the kitchen. And trust me, you don't want to go to this kitchen. It is here that they would incinerate their victims with fire, dissolve them in acid baths, and last but not least, feed them to alligators. The leaders of these cartels are far from righteous as you would expect. It is said that one of them ordered the face of an innocent man to be cut off because he was dating one of his female relatives. It's also said that another boss had an exotic taste for meat, especially the male buttocks. What he would do to his victims, he would make them take a warm bath for three hours, putting them in a nice relaxed mood before he would kill them. To make sure the meat was nice and tender, these were the kind of people Don Alejo was up against. Don Alejo didn't want to hand over his life's work to some thugs who felt entitled to take what they wanted without any resistance. So Don Alejo gathered his workers and told them to go home and take the weekend off. And so he went to work to prepare for what he knew would be his last day on earth. Don Alejo cleaned and prepared his massive gun collection, placing each gun with its ammunition on every window of his ranch house. This was a strategy to enable him to fight the Losetas in every direction efficiently without carrying around guns and ammunition. After that, Don Alejo fortified his home, he said his prayers, and took whatever rest he could while he waited for the inevitable. 4 a.m. 14th November 2010, the Losetas cartel rolled into the ranch, armed to the teeth, waiting for Don Alejo to cower and leave. However, they made a man ready to die, die for what he believed in. So he told them if they wanted his property, they would have to kill him. As a last attempt to make Don Alejo understand what was happening, they fired warning shots above his property. To the common man, this would be a sign to pack your bags and say goodbye. But Alejo was no ordinary man. He was a legend, engraving his name into the books of history as the man who died for his principles. Suddenly, Alejo draws his gun and drops two gang members to the ground, killing them instantly. Silence fills the air as the cartel members didn't expect this, astonished by what the 77-year-old Don Alejo had done. So in retaliation, they returned fire, raining down bullets at the house. But what they didn't know, Don Alejo had already moved to another window. And so when the firing ceased, Don Alejo had taken out two more gang members with a hunting rifle. So the gun battle continued and some of the men charged the house, kicking in the front door. When they came face to face with Don Alejo himself, in his hand, a shotgun. Surprise, motherfucker. And with no hesitation, he took them both out. The gang started to panic, and more and more of them began to die. So they started firing high-powered rifles and launching grenades at the house in an effort to draw Don Alejo out. But this was still a struggle, as Don Alejo kept confusing them, constantly moving in different positions within the house. After five minutes of this, the gang was scared that they had attracted a lot of attention and it was only a matter of time before the army would swarm the ranch, so they fled. The Mexican Marines, however, showed up long after the battle had ended and they saw the house riddled with over 900 bullet holes and massive craters on the wall. When they entered the house, they thought they would find a group of ranchers, but they found dead gang members and empty bullet shells. They called out that it was safe to come out, but no answer was given, so they searched the house. Upon checking the bathroom, they found Don Alejo on the floor. During the shootout, he had been shot multiple times in his body, and his body was riddled with shrapnel from the explosives. He locked himself in the bathroom to make a last stand, but sadly, he died from his wounds, holding his rifle pointed at the door. Don Alejo Garza Tarmes proved that a bully hates resistance. 
that no matter how old, how small, or how short you are, you can make a difference. This story wouldn't have been told because many Mexican media houses were scared of the power of the Losetas, but one had courage to tell the legend of Don Alejo, a true hero that showed the world that sometimes you have to take a stand in life, even if it means you losing everything. May we all tear a page from Don Alejo's book and embrace bravery in our individual lives. Don Alejo Garza Tarmes, the 77-year-old farmer who fought one of the most brutal cartels, may his soul rest in peace. Thanks for watching and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because I make true crime and business conspiracy videos once a week. And always remember, keep trekking fam. No matter what you go through, no matter what life throws at you, never give up and keep trekking. Peace out.